Hey everybody, Tim Krause again. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a really fast video. I just want to share a couple of things with you. I was in the process of preparing another couple of videos. One on the uh, whether the Jesus of the Bible is actually the Jesus of the message of William Branham, and another one as to whether or not William Branham taught exactly what Paul taught. He asserted that several times. But I was a video excerpt from a sermon from Donnie Reagan was brought to my attention. This is a uh, excerpt from a sermon that Dottie taught, Donnie taught on the 29th of November, 2020. What's interesting about this video is, and, and this is kind of in line with the series that I have that are, is ongoing, interesting thing that message ministers say. This is chapter two for Donnie Reagan. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video and, uh, and let's see what it says. Now listen to me, if who knows exactly what the end time will be, they may confiscate our Bibles, they may try to take away our message tapes, it may come to a spot in our nation, who knows, uh, that, you know the way that the left is leaning and all the things that they're doing, I was just told just this week that in our neighboring uh, country uh, that they're going trying to pass a law that for anyone who goes to try to tamper with the gender of a child, a parent will be sent to prison for five years for trying to talk their child out of being perverted, that is lesbian or homosexual. If a minister will minister to them and try to rehabilitate them, a preacher can be thrown in jail for two years. Well, think about it. Now, that's just north of us. So who knows exactly where it's going to come to uh, before us? But I don't care if they shut us down, if they take our Bibles, if they take our tapes. We already have it written inside of our hearts. It may come to a spot that we have to quit streaming our services. We already have folks that stream anyway that just stream to pick what I say. Well, I welcome you today too. I know who you are. And I know that you stream just to pick. And you stream to find anything in the service that you can find. Well, you'll probably find it since I'm not an angel or since I'm not a Lord God. I'm just a human doing the best that I can. But because of that, there are people that will pick and this and that. It may come to a spot that the brothers around the message will no longer be able to stream their services because they will be looking for this and looking for that and looking for something else in order to get us in trouble with the law. Now, this is the type of people, believe it or not, friends, we are going through a religious persecution. I hope you understand. We've looked about it. We've talked about it for years and years. And who is doing a lot of it? Former message people that sat right among us. They are under an anointing of a religious persecution. You gonna preach with me? But you know what that tells me? Brother Darren, I'm talking about before I come out. That tells me that the bride is closer to the image of the Lord Jesus than maybe we've been thinking. Because remember, he not only walked on water, raised the dead, healed the sick, cast out devils, but he was persecuted like no one else. They sent people to his meetings so that they might be able to catch him in his words, according to the book of Mark. According to the book of Luke, lawyers came tempting him to be able to set traps for him in his words. And we have the same thing repeating again today. But of course, it's only happening among who? The real people of God. Amen. I wonder if the bride's not getting closer to that image. My, we want miracles. We want supernatural. I don't want to just bear that image of the Lord Jesus. I want to bear that image of one that is hated, that is run down, that is, come on, saints. That is part of being the bride of Jesus Christ. He was the most hated individual that had ever been on the earth. And you want to get out of here without being despised? It ain't going to happen. Okay, so we've watched the video of Donnie Reagan. I want to, let's recap really quickly what he says. He says the message of William Branham is elite. That among Christians, in Christianity, the message of William Branham is separate from everyone else. We know that salvation, according to the scripture, according to the Bible, God's word, the word of Jesus Christ, we, and the other apostles and the disciples, we know that, that uh, salvation, there's only one layer, one level of salvation. That's repentance, that's, that's accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, entering into that covenant uh, that he offered when he died on the cross for us. Uh, we also know that the repentance of our sins, 
baptism for the remission of sins, and it says in, in the book of Acts, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. So we know that there's only one layer. There's only one level of salvation in biblical terms. Donnie Reagan would tell you that that's not true. William Branham, in fact, tells you that that's not true. Now, I've resisted the word of the used cult because I believe there are a lot of ministers and there are a lot of message believers that have a very sincere faith. They may not know exactly what the message preaches, they may they certainly don't know exactly what the bible teaches so they can compare it to the message and and again we're motivated to do this just as the Bereans did in the in acts 17 chapter 10 and 11 or excuse me verse 10 and 11 we're motivated to do this because we have to compare what we hear and what we see to the word of god to make sure that it's true. We're motivated to do it because we love the people in the message. We want people to understand the truth and to be able to come out of a behavior or come out of a message that does not follow the word of God, the one true gospel of Jesus Christ according to the Bible which is our absolute. So we've, we've resisted that but I, I, I want to take a look at Donnie's video and I want to talk about it in terms of behaviors. Okay, uh, there, There's a link in the description below that's the uh, page from the Believe the Sign website. It, it's, it's entitled, Is the Message a Cult? You're also going to see, by the way, the study notes as usual right up here in the corner so that you can follow along. It'll be available for you to download as well. Um, so th this is th these are quotes from William Branham. I'm going to start with a quote called Power of Transformation, Prescott, Arizona, taught in 1965. This is on uh, this is on uh, Halloween, uh, October 31st, 1965. If you believe the message of the Bible and the present message of the day, a vindication of it, and then he goes on to talk about how you certainly are predestined and that's why you're sitting here, is because you believe in the message of the day. Also in 1964, uh, July 17th, Feast of the Trumpets, I'm going to, you can read the paragraph, but I'm going to tell you this. He says, it's world known, Jesus, the Son of God, revealing himself by the scriptures, making that scripture that has been predestinated to this day, like it was to that day and all other days, live. And to believe it is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. So what Branham's saying here is, you need to believe it for this day in order to have evidence of the Holy Spirit. We know that that's just not scriptural. Here's another one. Is this questions and answers, 1964, August 23rd. Branham says, there's only one evidence of the Holy Spirit that I'm aware of or that I know of, and that is a genuine faith in the promised word of the hour. Of the hour. Now, remember the one that I that I talked about previously where Bible says, and the pre, or Branham says, and the present message of the day. Same very same uh, sermon, Power of Transformation, Prescott, Arizona, 1965, uh, October the 31st. Listen to Branham. This is quoting William Branham. We're not a cult. We're not a bunch of fanatics. If somebody has to tell you that they're not engaging in cultish behavior, that should probably tell you a little bit. But let's figure out what that behavior looks like. Okay? Do a little bit of research. I went out to a, a web page called Cult Research and Information Center. They're an organization from Chico, California. Uh, I'm putting a link to their information in the description as well. Uh, now this group, uh, the, you're going to see a list of behaviors, and these aren't all of them. These are some that I picked out that are very quickly recognizable when you take a look at some of the ministries in the cult or some of the behaviors of some of the ministers in the cult. You'll, you'll see them. Excessive zealous and unquestioning commitment to the leader, whether he's dead or alive. Regards his belief system ideology and practices the truth as the law. Questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged and even punished. The leadership dictates in great detail how members should think, act, and feel. Get permission to date, change jobs, marry, what to wear where to live, whether to have children, how to discipline children, so forth. The group is an elitist group claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders and its members, 
The leaders considered the Messiah or a special being an avatar, or the group and or the leader is on a special mission to save humanity. The leader is not accountable to any authority. Leadership induces feelings of shame or guilt in order to influence and control members. This is done through peer pressure and subtle forms of persuasion. Subservience to the leaders or groups requires members to cut ties with family and friends and radically alter the personal goals and activities they had before joining the group. They're encouraged or required to live and socialize only with other members of their group. The most loyal members, the true believers, feel that there can be no life outside of the context of the group. They believe there is no other way to be and often fear reprisals to themselves or others if they leave or even consider leaving the group. So I want you to think about that for a moment. What does that sound like? Is there any, is there any similarity between that and message churches? Some message churches, I should say. Is there any similarity as an example to the elitist beliefs and the persecution belief that Donnie Reagan talks about in the video that we saw? Even William Branham tells us to leave organizations that have these attributes. I'm going to describe a, a message that he preached or a sermon that he preached in 1962, November 22nd. It's called Re Return in Jubilee. But if you sold your inheritance, if you sold out and done these things, what am I saying? Return back. If you joined up with some cult that tries to keep you away from fellowship with other brethren, leave the thing. William Branham said that. The Bible specifically speaks about withdrawing from teaching which isn't based on the word of Jesus Christ. Paul's letter to Timothy, the first letter to Timothy, chapter 6, verse, I'll start at verse 3 and go to verse 5. If any man teach us otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men and of corrupt minds, and dis destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Listen, here's the thing. Cultish behavior tells us that you're an elite organization, that you're an elite group, that, oh, that you're the only people that are saved, that you have to believe in the message of William Branham to be saved. And whether you want to admit it or not, that supersedes the Bible or the Word of God. And we know from revelations that removing from or taking away uh, or adding to the Word of God has some incredibly dire consequences. And we're very familiar with what those are at the end of the, end of the book of Revelations. John the, Revelator, John the Revelator talks about that. So I just wanted to make highlight a little a few things. You know, I'm sure there will be other sermons from other pastors. I'm sure that Donnie Reagan won't be able to contain himself and will get an opportunity to address other sermons as well. Persecution complex, separation because you're an elite organization, attributes of exactly what this behavior is. And again, I'm not saying that all message churches are cults. What I am suggesting is that this behavior is rather indicative of somebody being involved in a cult. I'll leave it at there. Listen, we, we love everybody. We just want everybody to know the truth. We want you to know the one true gospel of Jesus Christ and salvation and, and uh, acceptance of the Holy Spirit through biblical lenses, not through the message lenses which are in addition to the Word of God, supersede the Word of God, are accepted as the Word of God, but they really don't agree with the Word of God. So I'll leave it at that. Anybody wants to get in contact with us, my contact information is on the end card. Everybody, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope everybody's doing great. I'm really pleased to know that the COVID experiences at Happy Valley Church are, uh, are completed. Uh, and that the COVID experience with uh, Pastor Jesse Smith and his assembly, his family of 10, that those are also completed. We're grateful that everybody's backing up on their feet and doing things. And, and uh, we just be safe. Make sure that everybody's safe. God bless you. Anything else you need from us, make sure you give us a heads up and let us know. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.